The electron distribution of an atom will indicate how reactive an atom is. Electrons are distributed into orbits around the nucleus of an atom in a specific pattern. For the purpose of this course, you only have to understand a very elementary level of electron organization, and it goes like this. The first orbit can only hold two electrons, and then it is full. The second orbit can hold up to eight electrons till it is full, and the third orbit can hold up to eight electrons till it is full. For the purpose of this course, we will not go beyond the third electron level. Let's try a couple of examples. How are the electrons in magnesium distributed? First, we can see that the atomic number for magnesium is 12. So we know that there are 12 electrons in a neutral atom of magnesium. Now let's distribute the electrons. We know that the first orbit can hold up to two electrons. We also know that the second orbit can hold up to eight electrons. So far, we have distributed 10 electrons, but magnesium has 12 electrons in a neutral atom. So we now have to go to the third electron level to put the last two electrons in. Remember that the third electron shell can hold up to eight electrons. So the outermost electron shell or valence electron shell for a neutral atom of magnesium is not full. Therefore, this atom of magnesium is unstable. Now you do the electron distribution for fluorine. Is fluorine stable or unstable? Atoms become stable when their outermost electron shell is filled to capacity with electrons. If an atom is unstable and its outer shell is not filled with electrons, stability is achieved in one of three ways. An atom will either gain electrons, lose electrons, or share electrons to become stable. In the case where hydrogen atoms react with an oxygen atom to become stable, these atoms share electrons, thereby forming the water molecule. In the next video, we will study the structure of the water molecule and how this sharing of electrons facilitates the function of this compound.